left valve. And like this one here, this one here is pretty much dead at the top. That's not, the, the upper part of that is not really the fall right. leaf drop. That's been like that for several weeks. So you've got two little clusters of leaves and really and truly, you've got like 90% of the leaf cover gone. So by any measure of what you should treat, what you shouldn't, cut it down and get rid of it because it's not going to be. And they grow a mohawk, uh, <coughs> I grow mohawk, no, I'm dating. <laughs> national fuel, national, no, Great. national grid. National grid. That is anything that's hanging over the uh, yeah. <coughs> now, power lines, they'll cut down from nothing. Oh, okay, that's good. That's excellent. Because I mean, that'll take some of the. Amount, but that, they that, will take that'll take cost. a little of the, the burden off of the town of Grand Island, right. because the town of Grand Island is responsible for anything within their right of way. So between what? the sidewalk and the street. Well, but any, usually, but any, it's, but usually it's a little beyond the sidewalk. No, but you've got it between the sidewalk and the street. Over, it's up to them to take it. The, absolutely. Our power lines, they are. Yeah. They will cut it down to okay. a certain, yeah, then you'll have to deal with the rest no, Normally, they'll, I, it, that's been my experience, so they usually will do that. Because yeah. they came okay. around the, one day. Uh, yeah. My, <coughs> my now, the, the, the town right of ways are fairly extensive on some of the roads. Some of the roads, the town's right of ways like 66 feet from the middle of the road. And if you count out like 66 feet from the middle of, uh, yeah. Let's say fix. That's a long ways in. It's like spreading the word. That's significant. I don't know that fix is one of the ones that's that. Would apply in, a, in a development too. In the developments, it's usually less. If you have sidewalks, it's usually the sidewalk is a good rule of thumb. If you have one that's right alongside the sidewalk on the house side of the sidewalk, it may or may not be the towns. I would. I would. You know, <laughs> go to the town and ask them to take it out. Oh, do you, do you, mean I, do you mean at my, uh, at my house? Because I don't have a sidewalk. And if I'm in town, you can deal with all 11 of them? You, <laughs> well, I don't know if the town can deal with all 11 of them. But, I, you know, that's that's always a possibility. How about the, the woods back of the high school? Anywhere in a forest, you just let them fall. Yeah, you don't know. What if now, close enough to hit my property? If, if they're close <laughs> enough, well, if they're going to fall on your property, that's an interesting thing. I've never had the town be very receptive to that because I've had town trees fall onto my property and they just they could care less. <laughs> in, 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 your neighbor's not responsible for the trees either if they fall on your property unless Somehow you get to, agree, to have your neighbor to agree to come over and look at the ones that are in bad shape. Otherwise, you're responsible for good trees if they fall on your property. Right. What if um, the tree, you know, hits your house? If the tree hits your house, that probably means that it's on your property, and you I, that's a bill. you you have to <laughs> you alive. have to keep track of a dead tree on your property and make sure it gets removed. Are there any any other things you can show us up? Close, yeah, some us? other signs. Um, okay, let's, let's go over here. One of these over here is really interesting because it shows if you're looking to see whether your tree's affected, don't worry so much about the exit holes for the bugs. The exit holes, <laughs> you, you'll see them sometimes, but they're hard to see. Okay, Partly because the woodpeckers go after these things all the time. And what I'm going to show you over here is if you look at the damage the woodpeckers have done on this tree all the way up to the top. And the wood is once you cut the wood, you cut the tree down. According to the New York State DEC, there's a Prohibition on transporting oh, the wood anywhere. It's much of a fireplace, so we can check out. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, I often recommend pimping as a way to kind of destroy the internal uh, colonies in here, but uh, burning it first just as well. If you stack it up in a wood pile to burn it, the uh, the the is, the is the it going to move to other trees? Yeah. Not likely, no. Because it's already all over the place. What you really need to pay attention to, though, is... Uh -huh. And it's just going it's, it's to continue to get worse, unfortunately. Yeah, and, and what you need to do to plan for the future is to look at what kind of trees can I plant in place of these that won't be affected by the emerald ash borer. Mm -hmm. That will give me the same nice look in my property, land from a landscape or shade point or anything like that. When you go inside, uh, you're getting, or one of the handouts I think that you got there, there's a website uh, for the Cornell Urban Horticultural Institute. There's a 160-page manual in there that tells you how to assess your property, and it's really actually kind of simple. You don't have to do anything for any crazy scientific test. And it gives you a whole lot of uh, information about different tree species you can put in, depending on whether your yard gets rated out as saturated or partly saturated or drier. Mm -hmm. And it gives you a range of options of different trees that you can plant. Now, what you should be doing now, if you have a yard full of ash trees, is start, um, you know, thinning them out, the ones that are bad, and start planting replacements. So you're saying even the healthy ones, the ones that are healthy now, you're, you're not going to be able to save. Well, no, you might be able to. It yeah. depends on whether they're infested. But if they show any signs like this, mm -hmm. um, you know, you're going to have guys going around telling you you can chemically treat it and save it. Yeah, you probably might be able to, but you're still going to have a tree that looks like it's half dead. Hmm. Right? And they won't guarantee that. Right? And they won't guarantee it, mm -hmm. and you have to keep doing it every couple of years. So you might as well get yourself a tree like an American sycamore, for example, mm -hmm. that doesn't need any kind of treatment like that, grows relatively fast, and likes wet soils, heavy soils, like we have here on Grand Island. We also have a task force, and that's part of what all tonight is about, that has uh, started to put together a management plan for the town that also will include different varieties of trees that we will recommend that people replant in order to reforest their property. And, mm -hmm. you know, in fact, like, that's going to actually happen on this part parcel of land right here. As soon as we start threading, you know, thinning out these trees, we'll start replacing them with other tree species. And when you replace your trees, don't plant everything the same species. Mix it up. Because when you get into monocultures, that's what insects like. They can land in that patch and they can go through the whole thing. If you just have one of them, it, it usually can survive even if the others in the forest altogether are infest, infested. So it's a good idea to have different kinds of tree species in it. Do you see any entry points on these trees? I don't know if we see any here. Do they attack from, do they bore in from top to bottom, or are they usually up above, you know, in the... No, they'll they'll hit any, they'll sit the side of the tree down at this end, up in the, you know, up in the top. It's not like gypsy moth. They used to, you know, sit up on the top during the day and come down at night and then go back up again, but these are different. I've seen I lots see of dead any. trees in my neighborhood, but I've only seen one one emerald ash borer in the last several years. Well, you can see you can see some of the uh, some of the, the tracks over here if you want to look closely into this one here. They'll have more pictures up there for you. This tree is uh, pretty well shot. Oh, there it is. We're splitting the bark. That's what I heard to look for. Is where it splits the bark, that's where they're down in there. Uh, there's holes in here, though. I've seen the V-shaped. We're looking for larvae in here. The larval stage of these little beasts. Which we're not finding. What we're finding now is sow bugs, which is, means this tree is already go, starting to decay. Mm -hmm. yeah, move down So we thought we'd show this to you to give you an idea of just what's going on, and it's affecting the town as well as your own properties, too. So 
Sure. Uh, we have this all over the town. We're doing a tree assessment right now to determine which ones are dangerous enough to have to be taken down because they'll fall on the road or on the sidewalk. We're also going up and down all the town trails, like in Nike Base Park, uh, up off of the Dell and so on, to see if there's any kind of trees that are going to be you know, putting the trail users in peril if they fall down or a windstorm or something like that. If you look over here, you can see a, a tree that's already getting cracked and it's starting to get weakened. You can take a look. All right, show us. Uh, this tree doesn't have too much wood packing. No, but uh, down here, it's showing it's really weak and it's starting to get cracked oh, up. Yeah, yeah. This tree, not much longer before it'll come yeah. down on its own. Yeah, it'll, it'll probably yeah, follow. She's these. splitting right up, right up to the yeah, center here. Right up, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Hey, Dick. This one's got to go probably as soon as possible. You see it's structurally failing up at this through the center? Well, the good news is, uh, the bad news is that it's leaning up towards the road for just leaning this way. Yeah, actually, that's good. If you just drop it in there, it'd be fine. If there is good news, that's the good news. Oh, yeah. Which, if, uh, if any of you are taking your own trees down, be, be very careful when you're felling them and don't do it alone. And be careful dangerous. around utility corridors too. So if you take out your neighbor's power lines or telephone lines, you're going to be on the hook for a little bit of uh, liability, I think. Not to mention personal injury if it's a live wire. You know? Anybody have any questions? Anything else you want to know about it? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, give us some good news. <laughs> no, I think there's a New York State Assembly bill in there that they're talking about tax credits for people who have emerald ash borer infestations. Um, I've got a lot of experience with assembly bills. They're often introduced. It makes uh, the assemblymen look good, but they don't usually go anywhere. Particularly so, if they involve money. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't really, I wouldn't wait. I wouldn't hold my breath waiting for it. If the tree is, looks like it's going to come down and it's cause injury to somebody, you want to take it down. 